Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Andrew Olson, and this is another classic cinema review. This time it's going to be Damon Runyon's The Lemon Drop Kid, released by Paramount Pictures in 1951. This is a Christmas comedy starring Bob Hope as the title character, Marilyn Maxwell, Lloyd Nolan, Jane Darwell, William Frawley, and Fred Clark to round out the major cast. Uh, the film was directed by Sidney Landfield. The film opens at a racetrack in Florida where well-known con man the Lemon Drop Kid is touting eager suckers with lots of money. Unfortunately, he ends up touting the wrong woman in that of mobster Moose Moran's girlfriend. He ends up costing the mobster $10,000 in winnings. Moose wants his dough, but the kid hasn't a dime to his name to pay up. He does, however, offer Moose a deal. Give him until Christmas Eve, and he'll scrape together the cash. He also points out that 10000 in hand is much better than a dead con man. Moose agrees and lets the kid go. The kid flies up to New York City, where his prospects aren't looking any better. He arrives during a major snowstorm, and then promptly runs into an acquaintance of his, Nellie Thursday, an old doll who is down on her luck and um, unfortunately has not been able to uh, be admitted into the old folks home that she and her husband were trying to get into on account of the fact that her husband Henry is a safe cracker who has been locked up for the last 20 years. He is getting out of prison on, you guessed it, Christmas Eve and she's afraid that they will have nowhere to celebrate the reunion. The kid tells her to keep her chins up, something will come through. He leaves her and heads for his girlfriend's, uh, Brainy Baxter, played by the lovely Marilyn Maxwell. Brainy doesn't want to have anything to do with the kid's latest schemes, but he does end up wrangling ten bucks from her. Uh, this gets him started on his quest for uh, warmer clothing and collecting the ten grand. Uh, they apparently had a little issue the last time they were together. The kid was supposed to go out and get a marriage license and instead bought a ticket to Florida. Needless to say, the fact that he ran out, out on her once makes him a uh, uh, an annoyance in her life, shall we say. The kid makes his rounds around New York City and stops by crime boss Oxford Charlie's nightclub. Oxford doesn't really like the kid a whole lot, and uh, he's got financial difficulties of his own, what with tax season coming up, so he throws the kid out. The kid does get a spark of inspiration when he's on the street, however. He sees a Santa Claus with a silver bell and a pot collecting donations for, uh, for charity, for uh, the, the needy, I guess you could say. And of course, the kid is in need of charity. He is his own charity case, so why not go into business for himself? He puts himself on a street corner in a uh, rather slapped together Santa suit, <laughs> ringing a bell, and he's instantly caught up, or instantly arrested rather, for soliciting. <laughs> his rather uh, his rather unfortunate situation does have a silver lining in an odd sort of way. He does find out in jail that you need a city license to uh, collect donations for charity. That and the fact that he meets up with Nellie Thursday once again, who has been arrested for trying to remove all of her belongings from her apartment before she is evicted, gives him the second piece to his, um, his legitimate scam, if you will, or legitimate charity. He sets up the Home for Old Dolls. It's Nellie Thursday's Home for Old Dolls, and uh, recruits not only his girlfriend, but a whole bunch of small-time con men to run the scam. Basically, they have a license to collect money for the old folks' home, or the old lady's home that he's started, and start doing rather well. Word gets around that they're making all kinds of money quickly, and Oxford Charlie, who is also in uh, contact with Moose Moran, decides to muscle in. Not only does he muscle in, but he tells the kid's cohorts, if you will, what the kid was actually planning on doing with the money, 
and the kid again ends up out on his face with really nowhere else to go. Now this being a Christmas movie, not to mention a Bob Hope comedy, is not as serious as the story might sound. Um, I will admit Bob Hope's character is rather unlikable, although Bob does his usual comedic shtick and is very funny. Uh, this is um, this does have a bit of uh, a redemption theme going on through it, and the kid really has nowhere else to turn. He either tries to redeem himself and go up against two of the biggest crime bosses around, and all while trying to save himself and his friends, or he simply skips town and winds up in a uh, concrete bathing suit somewhere in Florida. Uh, but anyways, I won't tell you how the movie turns out. If you're interested, please go and watch it. This is a comedy, as I said before, and what with all of the uh, the rigmarole, stress, and chaos of the holidays, if you're looking for some laughs, I think this is where you uh, this is where you want to be. You've come to the right place. There really is no need for all the stress and the uh, the chaotic situation during the holidays. This is supposed to be the largest and most important birthday celebration of the year, that of the birthday of Jesus Christ. But if you are stressed out, then the Lemon Drop Kid will surely bring some smiles to your face. I think the cast did a a decent job with this one. The comedy holds up surprisingly well considering it's a 1951 film. A lot of Bob Hope's lines could easily fall into uh, some sort of a, a film or a movie today if somebody wrote stuff that way today. Uh, the lines do hold up. The characters themselves are humorous. Marilyn Maxwell does a good job playing the on-again, off-again girlfriend. She's tough enough to stand up to the kid and she can she can hold a, hold her own, I guess you, you could say. Marilyn Maxwell uh, has a couple of songs that she sings in the film and does a couple of duets with Bob as well. Song and dance numbers had not been phased out of movies in the early 50s. They've been around for many, many years. And one of the most notable songs sung by Bob and Marilyn in the movie is Silver Bells. Silver Bells was first recorded by Bing Crosby, and I'm sure you've heard that version before, but the song was actually written for this film. And Bob Hope and Marilyn Maxwell do a a decent, if not slightly comedic version as they romp through the decorative streets of New York City while it's snowing. Uh, a semi-humorous and slightly touching scene, to say the least. The musical score was done by Victor Young. I thought the score was decent. It fit the film. Uh, nothing extraordinary about it. The song Silver Bells was used as sort of the bass melody for it, but um, it wasn't a bad score. The songs were done by Jay Livingston and Ray Evans. Direction in the movie was also decent. I didn't see anything that was really out of place. And all of the gags and, and physical humor was recorded well. I think one of the most humorous parts of the film was when William Frawley, who plays one of the um, small-time con men who is recruited by Bob Hope, he's dressed up as Santa and trying to convince shoppers and uh, folks around the city to chunk in a little bit of money into his pot. He's trying to get people to donate for the needy, and the way he goes about it is singing a rather uh, uh, humorous version of Silver Bells. This leads up to the the actual song sung by Hope and Maxwell, but William Frawley has this sort of gruff growl of a character that he so often portrays, and he has a very comedic sort of undertone to it, and I think he was probably the best known for that sort of character. Uh, it's always enjoyable to watch him. This is the second adaption of Damon Runyon's short story, The Lemon Drop Kid. I've never read his short story. The first movie was done in 1934, 
and I haven't seen it either, so I really can't say a whole lot regarding a, a comparison. There is an article on AFI.com, I think, American Film Institute. I'll leave a, a link in the description below. Uh, the article gives a little bit of insight into the differences between the two films, in case you wanted to know. All I know is this film is very different and really has nothing to do with the first one. This is a different story, and this is more of a comedy, apparently, than the first one. So, uh, it's got Bob Hope. What, what, what do you expect? All in all, I'd say it's a decent film. I'll give it a... Uh, it's almost a four-star film in my book. I'll give it a three-and-a-half-star rating out of five. If Bing Crosby had made a small cameo, I would have given it four stars. There is a, a rather humorous um, nod to him or, uh, or joke that Bob tells that sort of references um, his long-running partnership with Bing Crosby. Uh, in the road pictures that were so famous back then. But Bing doesn't actually show up in the movie, which is unfortunate. Still, it's a decent film. If you're sick of watching the Hallmark Channel during the holidays, or if you've simply worn out all of your holiday favorites, you might try this one. I think it'll, uh, I think it'll brighten your day, uh, especially if you've got a lot of relatives around that really, really, really have overstayed their welcome. At any rate, check out the Lemon Drop Kid. Thank you all for watching. Couldn't have waited till after I finished to start chiming. Ugh. Everybody's a critic, even this old thing. <laughs> at any rate, thank you all for watching. I want to uh, thank Jerry at DrMacro.com for supplying the, the uh, pictures and posters that I have here that you've seen in my video. As always, he's done a fantastic job. This was a a, um, a rather spur-of-the-moment, last-minute video for the holiday, and uh, Jerry came through like that. So thank you, Jerry, and Merry Christmas to you. Please subscribe and like the video if you found it helpful or insightful, perhaps enjoyable even. Um, I want to thank all of you for supporting my channel. And uh, I, I want to wish all of you a happy holiday, a very Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. Take care.